was looking through this book. It's a big one. Watercolor, A History. And it's just a beautiful book. I really love it. And I came across these watercolors by Bert Morisot. And I just really loved, I love both of them. I love how sketchy this one is up here. I really, I love the colors in this one as well as the composition and just how loose it is. That's definitely my kind of vibe. So I decided I'm gonna do a study of that in my sketchbook. This is a Pentallic sketchbook. And I like this one a lot because it does hold, let me find a watercolor in here. It does hold water really well without buckling. There's a watercolor. And it also holds acrylic well. There's a few acrylics in here. And I like it for pen and ink also. I, I feel like it's a pretty good paper. It does have some texture to it. Let's go ahead and get started on this. I'm using, this is my favorite mechanical pencil, the Graph Gear 1000. And that's what I'm gonna use to sketch it out. And then I have, this is just a little watercolor palette. It's a travel palette that has a ring on the back for holding it while you're using it. And then it has two sides that you can mix colors in. And even at home, this is the palette I reach for a lot, even though it's made to be a travel palette. I just find it has the colors I need and enough mixing surface. I'll sometimes use, I have this wonderful antique ceramic palette. And if I need a bit more surface area, I'll use this. This is a French porcelain watercolor palette. You can find those on like eBay or Etsy. They surface every once in a while. And the colors I have in the palette, actually they're a little bit different than what's in here. And on my, I always make a swatch when I fill my palette, but uh, I changed out a color since I did that. So I've got cerulean blue, olive green, ultramarine, indigo, cadmium red, burnt sienna, yellow ochre, and cadmium yellow. My cadmium yellow is a little dirty. I'll need to clean that up because I'll definitely want to be using that. And then for brushes, I really like, these are by Princeton. They come in a set and I like these two. This one's great for washes. This is great for some finer detail. And I will use this travel brush quite a bit. I think it's, yeah, it's an Escoda brush and I'll use this one as well. I should be able to do everything I want with these brushes. And then I have a water cup and some paper towels. I'm going to start off just by kind of getting the general shapes and I'm doing this very loosely um, so that if I don't like it, like that's, I can easily undo it. And I'm looking at also kind of the negative spaces kind of more than I am the actual thing that I'm sketching. And I just want to say to those who are like, oh my gosh, I'm really nervous. This isn't, you know, this isn't my thing. I like, this is kind of a struggle for me too. I always feel a little bit uncertain when I'm first starting a sketch. I'm always kind of have that, that voice that's like, oh my gosh, what are you doing? <laughs> you can't do this. This is gonna be a disaster. But that's why I really like doing pieces like this that are, they, they feel sketchy and loose and comfortable to me. If I was doing one of these watercolors that was like, really tight and structured um, like oh my goodness this one yeah you can see enough of it this is by Anders Zorn and I would swear it was oil I, I just can hardly believe this is watercolor but trying to do something like that would be totally overwhelming so pick something that feels like it's kind of in your wheelhouse and even if this feels too structured for you or you're scared about doing people picking something that's really loose or more abstract 
is a great idea too. Like some of these color studies, um, things that are just super loose. There's some really great watercolors by Cezanne in here that I think would be fun to, to play around with that are really more about layering colors and simple shapes, especially if people intimidate you. But again, people are just shapes. So try not to get too overwhelmed by it. So what I'm gonna do now that I have this initial sketch is I'm going to just use my pencil as a measuring stick and just sort of measure like, okay, that's pretty close. Mine's maybe a tad smaller, but I am working on a smaller piece of paper. Then I'm gonna look at the measurement from the hat down. And so she's a little high and I was kind of feeling that when I was looking at the horizon line in relation. So let me just lower that a little bit, lower her hat and her face a little bit. This is why you just keep the sketch super loose so you're not committing to anything. You can kind of give things a chance to evolve a bit. I'm coming in with a kneaded eraser. Okay, and I'm also gonna look at her width, which that's pretty good. And let's see what other, I'll look at this distance between her hat and her hand. And again, that's pretty good. Got a little bit of the hat coming down there. We've got a little hand reaching out. And then we've got just kind of a loose little foot. Okay, and then we've got this horizon line is right here about. And I'm looking at everything in relation to everything else. So this cliff is right above the hat. And this horizon line is above. This is how I do all of my drawings. I, I look at everything in relation to everything else and that helps me a lot because if I, try to draw things kind of in isolation, I end up, they just aren't right. Like I said, this doesn't, it's, this isn't like natural to me. I think we look at people who draw and just think like, oh, this is just so easy for them. And that's just, it's not the case with me. This, I find it challenging, but I wanna always challenge myself. I have no idea what this is in the background. Maybe another person. It looks sort of like a chicken. I don't know. So let's just, we're just gonna sort of get, get the shape. I don't know what it is, but that's not the main point of what we're drawing here. Okay, so now that I've got kind of the main shapes, I'm gonna come in and start just, I'm now I'm gonna do most of my detail with watercolor, but I at least wanna make sure that I have things sort of in the right spot. And I'm happy with it. I love the clothes of this time period. This is like late 1800s. Love drawing period clothes. Now I can, if you don't like drawing faces, this is a great one for you because she's got her hand covering her face. And I'm gonna measure her arm here just so I've got proportions. Good, yep, that's good. That the sleeve is up maybe a little bit high. Okay, 
And we've got just kind of loose skirts here. Not even sure, like we've got a shoe, but I'm really not even sure what all of the rest of that is. I guess just skirts and and then we've got this little girl in blue and she's just really sketchy. Like you even look at this hand. It's like not, if you're like, man, my hands look terrible. Like look at the, her art is like in some of the finest museums in Europe and you know, look at that hand. So don't get too critical of your art. This is just a little sketch and I find profiles to be horrible to draw. <laughs> they are my least favorite thing to draw and I need to work on them. So drawing her little profile is like right now I'm a little sweaty. So I'm just gonna, just gonna kind of keep it super, super loose. I don't know why they're so hard for me. I think what I need to do is the old trick of like turning it upside down maybe so I'm not looking at it as a as a face. Looking at it just as loose shapes. But again, we've got to stay very this is so loose that like it's okay. We do have a little bit of a shoulder, so let's get her shoulder in. There we go. So there's my initial sketch. And before I add watercolor, again, I can go back and, and just do some measurements. It helps to like stand up and kind of look at your drawing. It also helps to put the drawing as close to the original one as you can. And just take a minute to see if you notice anything that's like, ooh, that angle's a little off. But I'm happy with that, so I'm gonna start adding watercolor. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do in a watercolor is make sure I note where the whitest parts of the painting are because if I get color there, then um, you, know, you, you can't really pull that back. So I'm gonna look at the lightest points and I'm gonna use a bit of yellow ochre I've got people coming home. So I'm gonna use a little yellow ochre. I see the color of this skirt is just kind of a warm undertone, maybe even a little burnt sienna. It's a little, got a little pinkish hue, pinkish hue to it. Um, reminds me of Seinfeld. And I'm just gonna wash the skirt here. And wash her hat as well. And then we've got a little bit of this really warm color up at the top of the horizon. And we can go ahead and stick it on the cliffs and the little beach as well. And I see some warmth here too. And then I'm gonna do a little wash grabbing some olive green and mixing it in and I'm just gonna do a little wash over the grass and we'll build up some layers on the grass here So when starting out a painting, whether it's with watercolor or acrylics or oil, we're trying to just get like the big, the big shapes. Get paint everywhere, a little bit everywhere. And then we can start adding more detail. I'm 
There's actually, this green sort of is, is blurred over, so we'll just let that be blurred over, just like it is in her painting. I love in her painting, too, how you see some of the lines of the watercolor, like where it dried, where it blended, where she kind of laid in more color. Okay, and then this is a bit more, appears a bit more of like a muddy green, so we'll do some olive green and burnt sienna. I'm gonna let that little finger stick out there. So this color right now is very warm compared to the kind of the green that's on there, but I see a lot of warmth under it. So we'll, we'll add some green over that. Okay, I had one of my kids came in to talk to me, so. All right, so what I did is I grabbed a little bit of the red and actually I just noticed this has Windsor red on it. So it might actually be Windsor and not cadmium red, but they're very similar. I wouldn't stress too much about using one versus the other. So I added just a touch of the red to this um, burnt sienna yellow ochre mixture just to make kind of this little soft pink. And then I'm adding that to the cliffs and the beach. There's, I see a little bit of warmth up there. And then I'm going to add a little bit here. I'm kind of seeing like there's some, some warmth around so I'm just adding some of these warm shades in there this is actually a pretty good color so I'm gonna switch brushes so I have a little bit more control to this round it's a number six round. And I'm gonna grab this same color and get their skin. The thing that I struggle with most with watercolor is just patience, like letting each section dry enough. And I've learned though that if I kind of bounce between areas that really helps if I'm kind of more strategic and like aware of what's wet then that helps all right we've got a little child's face maybe a little bit there maybe a little bit back there I'm gonna grab some ultramarine blue and start adding in some of the grays. Ultramarine blue and burnt sienna, that combination is my favorite to make grays. And I'll use some space off to the side to test it out and see if I want a little more blue or a little bit more red. I'm adding more blue. Um, not red, burnt sienna. Okay, I feel like that's a good mix. So I'm gonna get 
this jacket and her bow. Oops, didn't get that shape very good. And again, I'm just blocking in the main shape and then obviously we'll come back and add some more black, darker colors. But this way we can easily pull it back if it's something's not quite right. This is where a loose study like this can get kind of challenging because you know that she was just, you know, whipping through this, trying to capture sort of the essence of the scene. And so her strokes are going to be very um, intuitive. Whereas since we're trying to copy something that she did, and we're not really trying to copy it, we're trying to do a study of it. We're trying to learn from it learn how we can get this look when we're, you know, out trying to capture a scene. But you want to try to, you need to kind of add, I guess, be willing to add your own flair to it so that you can get that sort of more intuitive brush strokes in there. So I'm adding up a few sort of adding in a few of the layers and obviously we're going to come in with a darker mix but i'm just trying to with this color add in a few more layers a little bit more depth this is what makes watercolors so fun i think Okay, and then to that mix, I'm gonna make it a little bit more brown so we can get the hair. And it's still burnt sienna and ultramarine blue. I'm 
just looking around to see if there's any more brown anywhere. There is kind of along here. To me, it actually looks like she used cerulean blue here because this color kind of splits, it kind of separates a little bit, and I can see that separation there. So it looks to me like that's the color she used. I may be wrong, it's just my guess. And then we've got kind of some very, just like hints of some clouds. So I'm dropping in some cerulean blue in the in the wet paint. I do a lot of um, painting on dry surfaces when I do watercolor. I like kind of having a little bit more control, but I am dropping some color into where it's wet. And then her outfit is very saturated. So it's the same color, just not watered down quite as much. A little bit of that red goes a very long way. I just wanted to add a tiny, tiny bit of red right here on the cliffs. Okay, so while I'm waiting for this to dry, I'm gonna head back over to the, the background and make that a little bit more green. Let me get some of this red up. I just don't need that much red. Actually, while I have it sort of toned down and have a little bit of pink, I'll come in and get her. Her face bit get her cheek and I'm gonna add a little burnt sienna and yellow ochre water it down quite a bit test it and Okay, and I'm gonna come back and get kind of more of this flesh tone in.
Okay, so let's see where else I can add. So I see this blue in a couple places on her outfit. Okay, now I'm going to go back and get that darker background there. Oops, so if you mess up like I just did and got a color where you did not want it, you just come in with a dry brush and kind of pull it up. Okay, then let's tweak this color a bit, a bit and make it our nice grass green, which has a little bit more blue in it, a little lighter. And we'll put this some places. got this kind of more yellowy green over here. 
We've definitely got some over here. So I'm just trying to capture some of the kind of sporadic brush strokes here. So I'm going to use ultramarine blue and burnt sienna to make a black.
Again, no idea what this thing is. If you have an idea of what, <laughs> what that is, you let me know, because no idea for my part. We have a super, I don't know, like a interesting blue green over here. I'm gonna try to make it with cerulean. It looks like it, it could be like a viridian or some, something along those lines. Brighter green than what I have in my palette. Eh, that's close. kind of muddy back there, so I'm kind of muddying it up a little bit. Okay. Definitely need a darker brown in here. And we got to get the blacker bits even more black. Okay, I'm pretty happy with that. And then I'm gonna come back with my pencil and just kind of make a few more marks. Especially I wanna get her face, the dreaded profile.
there's some kind of pattern on here that I'll try to get a little bit better. Definitely want to get her hand. And then we do have a little bit of gouache. We don't need very much. Taking a final look, I'll maybe add, looks like we got a few little strokes of burnt sienna. make this hill back there just a little bit darker. Just like one more layer. All right, there we go. Sign it, date it. And then sometimes what I'll do is take some leftover colors that are on the palette and just make little swatches kind of as a, as a reference. And then I'll make some little notes. So this is called On the Cliff. 